30 years, we've been subjected to the right-wing mantra of tax cuts, deregulation, and privatization. Oft, I've wondered, what would the world look like if the right-wing had their way? Well, my question has been answered. The right-wing utopia is here today. It's Somalia. You heard right, Somalia. No taxes, no social programs, no socialists, no unions. In Somalia, money buys anything or anyone. It's capitalism pure and breathtaking and it's freedom from government interference. Because in Somalia, there is no government. The main think tank of the Austrian School of Economic Hitmen is the Mises Institute, situated strangely in Alabama. This place is the cradle for right-wing luminaries like Friedrich Hayek, Marie Rothbard, and Ron Paul. They all love the fact that Somalia has no taxes or government, but a great cell phone network. Under titles like Stateless in Somalia and Loving It, and The Law of the Somalis, a stable foundation for economic development in the Horn of Africa, the son of Milton Friedman himself penned that beauty, the right wing nuts espouse the virtues of this dusty capitalist paradise. Read carefully to savor the rapturous prose about the Somalian free market and self-enforced property rights. Hell, Somalia is also an NRA wet dream. You're free to drive around town with a 50 caliber machine gun mounted on your Hummer. This ensures that your property rights are respected. This also takes capitalists from mere robber barons to full-on warlords. And if you keep your nose to the grindstone, maybe one day you too can be a warlord. Hell, that maverick, Murray Rothbard, even wrote that it's okay for people to be considered property. Provided, of course, that the slave voluntarily enters into the agreement at a fair market price. Welcome back, indentured servitude. We missed ya. The good news is, the retirement age is 48. The bad news is, the lifespan for the average Somali is 48. But hey, this sure saves a whack on social security costs. Okay, all right. It's just right-wing intellectualoid fun and games. Those think tank boys are just fun and ya. But right now, we're seeing levels of inequality and economic collapse unknown since the Great Depression. And for 21st century regressive conservatives like Rob Ford, that still ain't good enough. He campaigned on repealing Toronto's fair wage policy in effect since 1893. So the new mayor of the center of the universe wants to go back to the social inequality levels of 1892. These guys are serious. So you're asking, Umberto, what's it going to take to reverse the slide into dystopian capitalist dark ages? Well, let me take you back to Winnipeg 1919 and show you how it's done, son. Winnipeg workers captured the world's imagination during their general strike. These workers had first-hand experience of unregulated capitalism, so they didn't need a think tank to do their thinking for them. They marched under banners proclaiming that they would never be slaves and shut down the whole shebang. But Umberto, in school they taught me that the Winnipeg General Strike was a failure. Well, they lied to you. The Winnipeg General Strike scared the freaking bejesus out of the ruling classes. They thought it was the big R. We've been reaping the benefits ever since. Great-grandpa and great-grandma knew what was at stake. Many sacrificed everything to create a world free from robber barons and warlords. But if we don't get off our asses soon, the Fraser Institute and corporate money will soon have us all surfing away in the new feudalism. In Toronto, I'm Umberto da Silva, not Rex Murphy.